Dear Grade 9 students, Assalamu alaikum. Hope you all are fine. Here, there is another video for you. This is a famous short story, The Necklace, written by a renowned French writer, Guy de Maupassant. This story consists of two parts. Presently, I am going to narrate its first part. This story will be followed by a short assignment of Mesh the Column, in which you will join words with their meanings or explanations. Now the story starts. The girl was one of those pretty and charming young creatures who sometimes are born as if by a slip of fate into a family of clubs. She had no dowry, no expectations, no way of being known, understood, loved, married by any rich and distinguished man. So she let herself be married to a little clerk of the Ministry of Public Instruction. Matilda suffered ceaselessly feeling herself born to enjoy all delicacies and luxuries. She had no dresses, no jewels, nothing, and she loved nothing but that. She felt made for that. She would have liked so much to please, to be envied, to be charming, to be sought after. One day, Mathilda's husband returned home with an invitation to a ball at the ministry. At first, Mathilda did not want to attend as she had nothing suitable to wear. But when her husband promised her a new dress, she changed her mind. The day of the ball, Junior and Madame Weisel seemed sad, uneasy, anxious. Her husband said to her one evening, What is the matter? Come, you have seemed very strange these last three days. And she answered, It annoys me to not have a single ornament, nothing to put on. I shall look poverty stricken. I would almost rather not go at all. You might wear natural flowers, said her husband. They are very stylish at this time of year. For ten francs you can get two or three magnificent roses. She was not convinced. No, there is nothing more disappointing than to look poor among other women who are rich. How foolish you are, her husband cried. Go and see your friend, Madame Forestier, and ask her to lend you some jewels. You know her well enough for that. She uttered a cry of joy. True, I never thought of it. The next day she went to her friend and told her of her distress. Madame Forestier went to a wardrobe with a mirror took out a large jewel box, brought it back, opened it and said to Madame Weisel, Choose, my dear. She saw at first some bracelets, then a pearl necklace, then a Venetian gold cross, set with precious stones of admirable workmanship. She tried on the ornaments before the mirror, hesitated and could not make up her mind to part with them, to give them up. She kept asking, Haven't you any more? Why? Yes, look further. I don't know what you like. Suddenly she discovered, in a black stained box, a superb diamond necklace, and her heart throbbed with an immoderate desire. Her hands trembled as she took it. She fastened it round her throat and was lost in ecstasy at her reflection in the mirror. Then she asked, hesitating, 
filled with anxious doubt. Will you lend me this? Only this. Why? Yes, certainly. She threw her arms around her friend's neck, kissed her passionately, then fled with her treasure. The night of the ball arrived. Madame Loisel was a great success. She was prettier than any other woman present, elegant, gracious, smiling and wild with joy. All the men looked at her, asked her name, sought to be introduced. All the attaches of the cabinet wished to waltz with her. She was noticed by the minister himself. She danced with rapture, with passion, intoxicated with pleasure, forgetting all in the triumph of her beauty, in the glory of her success. In a sort of cloud of happiness comprised all this homage, this admiration, these awakened desires, and of that sense of triumph which is so sweet to a woman's heart. Dear students, I am giving you a very short assignment that is match the column. Here you will join words with their meanings or definitions or explanations. 